I have to ask a question. Raise your hand if you remember learning Metabruli. Not even 1% of you remembers actually learning it. Come and talk to me afterward and explain exactly what happened, because I need to know. I'm not kidding. Like you and you and you, well, you're going to be you and whichever one you were. Thank you. Uh, raise your hand if you remember learning italic. You know, the slanted one? One! Okay, I don't remember learning italic. I remember learning bold, and that was after 1986 when I got a Macintosh computer, because then you could use bold yourself. Beforehand, it was always, you know, the service, the, 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 the providers of text would choose the fonts, but once we would be able to do it, then we learned what bold and italic was. This is about the confusing case history of Georgian in Unicode, and I have a lot of slides here, and I have no prepared text, so um, somebody wave if I talk too fast, because I will. Uh, that's me. Is it so confusing? Well, let's start by looking at typewriters. Um, there isn't very much information about Georgian typewriters immediately online, but then I only started looking two days ago. Um, uh, this is a German-made Georgian typewriter, and my question, it didn't occur to me to wonder, my question was, well, this technology will have not been invented in Georgia. There were probably not machine companies that built typewriters in Georgia, so they would be modified from German or English or Russian typewriters, and so they would have shift keys on them. And I thought, well, what did the shift key do? So I looked at some pictures uh, on the internet, and there weren't very many. This is a German one. There's a, sh a shift key there called Zeichen, and another one called Backspace, and Zeichen is evidently for the numbers at the top. I'm not really sure. There's some punctuation under there, too. So the numbers have more than one uh, letter attached to each key. And you can see kind of sort of there. Uh, should I? Is this one of those things? No. Is this yeah, one? Yeah, you have to. The, the Yeah, if I want to. There's no battery in this. Fuck it, I'll go up and point to something if I need to, okay. So, if you look at this, it's okay, I don't care. Uh, if, if, you, if you look at this typewriter, you can see that there is no number three, because they used VIN for that, because they look the same. Uh, and it looks like the one and the zero are on the same key and that sort of thing. Uh, here's a Russian-made typewriter, uh, which has a separate one and zero key. Uh, uh, it also doesn't have a digit three, because they're using the VIN for that. And there's two, there's uh, on either side at the bottom, there's two uh, 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 t shift keys with the Cyrillic letter P on it. I do not know what the Cyrillic letter P means. The current Russian word for shift is shift. Good for them. This is your typewriter, which was made in Yugoslavia, which tells us how old it isn't. Um, and it's easier to see here what's on the top row. There's the same numbers. Number three is again missing. Uh, there is a Roman numeral V and X for the dates, I suppose, and so on and so forth. Well, um, this typewriter also has shift keys, as you can see, and amazingly, and I did not know this, and I don't think anybody else did either, because nobody's used a typewriter for 20 years or more, um, the shift key actually accesses Metavruli characters. Okay? This is astonishing to me. Um, because it clearly shows that at some point there was a definite requirement amongst Georgians um, for Tavroli to be treated as characters, and not evidently as some sort of style. Um, if you have to ask why it was lost, where it went, I'm pretty sure it's because 8-bit computer character sets would have either Latin or Cyrillic in the first half of it, and then it would have Georgian, and there wasn't enough room for all 66 uh, I'm not sure that's actually true, because I didn't count. Uh, but there, there evidently wasn't enough room. But here we go. This is amazing evidence of, of a requirement that was met by um, physical technology that cost money to make. So let's look at Unicode. By the way, I have no idea what time it is or how long I have to talk, so I'm just going to go. <sighs> there are some 8-bit uh, character sets for Georgian, but there was no real former, formal standard 
that you can find easily. You can't find the Koye, you can't find a picture of the Koye page anywhere on, on Google. Maybe if you search in Russian, I didn't try that. There was a library of Congress bibliographical standard, uh, which became ISO 10586, and that's what that picture is there. And that has the basic Georgian character set. Uh, and then uh, a couple of punctuation, three punctuation marks. Um, e Georgian was first encoded uh, also in the Unicode standard, Unicode version 1.0, um, and that was in 1991. And what we see in that code table is we have the ca Georgian, what are called Georgian, co their, their character names are Georgian capital letters, which are Asomtavruli, and Georgian small letters, which are Mkhedruli, and they're the punctuation character there. And a lowercase phi, but not an uppercase phi, which is a little odd. Um, but the way that this was interpreted by the Unicode people is that the Georgian small letters also were supposed to be used for Nuskhuri to the degree that they took any account of the existence of Nuskhuri. They might have done because there's the assumption of really is there after all. Well, this did not seem like a good idea. Uh, and so in 1999, I put forward a proposal to make Georgian better in the Unicode standard. And what I proposed was to add a number of uh, letters for Laz and Svan and Georgian dialects uh, and for Georgian linguistics. That's on, in, in, on the far that side. Uh, and then to add the Nuskhuri small letters. Well, nothing happened. They didn't understand why we should want to split these things. In short, we should, everybody could just change the font. Uh, who used Nuskhuri anything anyway. Uh, and so they told me that I would have to get more information and support from Georgia. We had some pretty good help. Okay. Um, this actually is a three-page letter. I, I, I ought to give a copy. I mean, there's a copy of it in the Unicode update. I, I, it is well, well worth reading. They spent time and effort to figure out the technical things, the requirements, the spelling rules. They, they, I mean, this guy and his staff wrote a really, really, it was, it was fantastic. And so um, two years later, in 2003, Ireland, that was me, and Georgia, that was who was I working with? It might have been Iraqi Garibashvili, which is not the one you think it is. <laughs> he was, he's, a, he's a librarian. He's a lovely guy. He's really, really tall. And I met him in Slovenia once. And so we worked together. And so Georgia and Ireland put forward this proposal in 2003, which encoded all of the Nuskhuri small letters. Uh, and uh, not as many characters had been originally proposed, uh, but some uh, letters for Tabasaran and Bats and East Caucasian linguistics. That's what that little uh, nar is there, the superscript one. It's to show that languages that have a nasal vowel, R, A, E, O, U, like French and things. So those were then encoded in Unicode 3.2. So we're finished, right? No. No, it wasn't enough, because I like this stuff. And I kept digging. And so uh, in 2010, seven years later, uh, I was working with Karl Pe go back, Karl, Pe Karl Petzlin from Germany, Ilya uh, Levlempliv, I don't know where he lives, and uh, Ninjal Melkadze, I love the name Ninjal, you all know the story behind it, I suppose, and me, wrote this to put in uh, some, a very small number of letters for Ossetian and Abkhaz. Uh, which also had forms uh, uh, in, uh, in, the, in Chutzuri there. You can see in the capital and small there. Uh, there's a uh, schwa. I forget what that Z thing is. I really do forget what that is. I don't care. I don't need to know now. Oh, no, no, that's the... Uh, there's the backwards schwa and the other... Oh, I don't care about that anyways. So anyway, they, those were encoded in, in Unicode 6.1. Uh, that, which was never printed as an actual book. That is not a real book cover. I didn't make it, but it's not a real book cover. Um, but even that wasn't really enough, because we got this recently, um, the Euro sign, uh, the Lari sign. <laughs> I helped to encode the Euro sign way back in the day, and we remember when the European Commission came 
drew this nice little thing just like this with these perfect circles and these little lines to show how far they were apart and then poetry to tell you that the distance between the two verticals expressed some form of stability or whatever. Um, and naturally the first thing, the, the European, this is back in, to, whenever that was, uh, and the European Commission says, and of course, you know, this is the way it must always been drawn and all of the topographers said, no, no, we're not going to do that. Uh, and so um, I helped uh, by modifying the thing so that it would look in, uh, be in keeping with the other with the other currency signs that we have in the currency sign block. Obviously, the Larry sign can be drawn any number of ways, as you know. Uh, that happens to be the way, uh, well, I proposed something, and then they came back and said, no, could you fix this and this and this? And so it was a lovely collaboration. And that was not 2016. That, that date is wrong there. It was two years ago, I think. Is it true? No, actually, it was formally published, I think, this year. But it was in use before. And there, there's where it goes. Again, this is a fake book cover. It's not my fault. Um, there is now one new currency sign underneath the Lari sign there, which is the Bitcoin. Yeah, that was a good idea. I don't know. So anyway, let's talk about Unicode use in Georgia. Um, we have, you have, a big problem in Georgia still of legacy fonts. And I've tried to explain this to the Unicode people, is that lots and lots of Georgians aren't using Unicode. And um, so we have, you know, fonts.ge, which is a great place. I've used it myself for something that you'll see in a, in a minute. Um, uh, but it, it, it supplies Latin encoding and STD8 encoding, which I guess is Koi 8. I'm not really sure. And I love unknown encoding. Wow. <laughs> That's really good. But they have Mehedruli uh, and they have Nuskuri. And I mean, this is, it's complicated. And it's a bit of a mess. Um, in the 1990s, it was very, very common for scripts to continue using 8-bit encodings. Um, and this was true for the scripts of India and Greek and Cyrillic and Armenian and Georgian. Um, uh, but one of the, uh, uh, but I don't think that you find very many texts in non-Unicode encodings in, anymore in Greek or in Russian or in Bulgarian or in Armenian. But you do still find them, and maybe you do, I don't know, but you do certainly still find them in Georgian. And I believe that one of the biggest problems which helps perpetuate the use of these old fonts is the lack of a standard solution for representing Tavruli. So let's talk about Wonderland. In my other life, Alice pays my rent. I, um, I, I began publishing um, translations of Alice in Wonderland around 2007. Uh, and I have now got Alice in over 60 languages, believe it or not. Some living, some dead, some fictitious, like Esperanto and Volapük and Lingua Franca Nova and Neo and other things. Uh, so this is just one of the things I do. And uh, 2015 was the 150th anniversary of the publication of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. And there was a big conference in New York and all sorts of work was put together to make this massive three volume set about Alice translations with back translations and stuff. And I met a man, Gia Gokieli, Go Georgi Gokieli. Um, uh, this, this is Alice in Irish. This was my first one. Uh, probably most Georgians have never seen Irish or heard it. A will to sauce to that fein an isha dort an spieg Not many Irish people can speak that, but I can. Uh, but uh, what happened is last month I published a new edition of Alice in Georgian. Here's one I brought earlier. No, I, I'm an idiot. I was supposed to have ordered 20 copies and brought them here to give away or sell or something, and I didn't. Here's one. Anyway, so there you go. And I and 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 Gia Gokieli, okay, I mean his translation was published in 1997, and it did very well. Okay. But this is the file that I got from him for this 27,000 word novel. Now I say, I'm Jamad Kmayofli Khar This is great for me. It's really bad for you. Um, I could have actually just used, used, used his, his fonts, but I did not. I converted the text to Unicode because I was just not going to do that. Uh, uh, and, and, and I'm glad, and there was lots, there's lots of fonts in this book and lots of very beautiful fonts in this book. 
Um, uh, uh, but I was, I was just horrified. And it was very shortly after that that these two guys got on t in touch with me. It was complete coincidence. They had no idea about this travesty of orthography. Um, but they came to me um, saying that we've got this um, problem. Uh, would you help look at it? And because they knew that I'd done this other weird stuff. Uh, uh, and um, so that's what started all of this off. That's why I'm here today. Uh, so why hasn't that really been encoded? And I have to say, this is, you need to know this, um, it is partly my fault. Blame me, seriously. Um, I did not understand it. I did not think about it clearly enough in 1999 and 2003. Uh, that is an example of a font with Taruli glyphs mapped to the Assumptive cap capitals, and this is just as much a mistake as the unification of Mechedruli and Nuskuri was. So here I am working real hard in, in 1999 and 2003, to, or until 2003, um, to, to get that disunified because it was bad for ecclesiastical Georgian. Um, but in my documentation, uh, my recommendation was to treat Taruli as a style, a particular style, that is to say, small caps. Not bold or italic, but, you know, and, and not uh, some new special style that could be invented, but like, oh, just treat it as small caps. Well, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't think about this. I'm not going to read this out loud. This is the text from the 1999 proposal. And it says, you know, Tavruli's letters are never used as ordinary capitals. And I was wrong about that. Uh, and, um, and I suggested that non-plain text small caps could be used to represent uh, Mechedruli in Tavruli style. And I was wrong about that. And years later, uh, I, I wrote the same thing. I mean, it was edited. Uh, uh, but I, I wrote the same thing. And this means that the UNOTO Code Technical Committee, to the degree that they paid attention to the, the actual recommendation made here, agreed with it. But they should never have agreed with it. So let's imagine that Georgian all caps are different somehow from Latin and Cyrillic and Greek and Armenian all caps. Let's say that those are real casing, but that Georgian all caps are some kind of style. All right. Well, they can't be a small caps style because small caps isn't a style. Small caps is a function and its functionality is based on the existence of separately encoded capital and small letters. Otherwise it doesn't work, okay? And the Unicode people should have known that and I should have known that and the people who paid any attention to properties should have thought about it, but nobody did. Um, and I, I can't blame anybody, but that's nobody's fault. I mean, we didn't have um, much, we didn't know. Um, Really, no, just nobody thought about it. Nobody was implementing it, probably. I don't know, um, you know, how many Georgian fonts are there compared to Latin? Well, you know. Um, anyway, um, if, so even if my recommendation for, from 1999 that small caps be used to represent Metavruli was accepted, it would still fail because there aren't any capital letters encoded. Um, I just don't think anybody thought about it. Um, and, uh, I suppose you know better than I that support for Georgian is not very widespread. Most operating systems offer fonts and some offer keyboards and some do not. Um, Apple has a keyboard um, for Mac OS, but it doesn't have a keyboard for iOS, which is bad. Um, localization of software into Georgian is not very widespread. And if we were to invent a special case, Georgian specific style for um, but really, it's not very likely that companies all around the world would pick that up and use it because why would they? How much market do they have here, et cetera, et cetera? And yet, it's really is absolutely everywhere in Georgia. You can't walk down the street without seeing signs. And, and, and more than that, it's, there are signs in Latin and Georgian. And you know, when it's, when it's mixed case Latin, it'll be, it'll be Mechedruli. And then when it's all caps Latin, it'll be uh, Tavruli. Almost 100% of the time, it's amazing. You guys never notice this, never think about it. You two do. Uh, <clears throat> um, but it's, it's, I'm, I, as a typographer, I'm looking around going, okay, this is something's going on here. Um, so if we invented this, this, this special style, um, it just wouldn't work. And he, here's the amazing thing. I actually found small caps before I got out of the airport. Okay, this is the baggage conveyor, right? And you've got, there's 100%, there's, if, 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 those are small caps. 
okay, it's weird and it's advertising and it's you know, stylistic and has the giant on and the giant A at the end, but it's small caps. Um, and so we've determined that small caps is mitsiri matevruli. I didn't, that's the word for it. You can now spread that through your country. Uh, so uh, this is, uh, part of this, you don't need to know this because you already know it, but you know, in ordinary metaverly, you'll have ascenders and descenders there, and in metaverly, it'll be like that, and here we have this small caps. I don't think small caps are particularly useful for Georgian, um, just because of the way that the letters are generally, important. but it exists, and it can only exist as, a, as an interrelation between, be, be, using the, the casing property between a capital, uh, Georgian, which doesn't exist, and a lowercase Georgian, which is the one that's uh, currently encoded. Uh, that's boring. <sighs> so one of the things before, when I told, the last time, uh, a couple, some weeks ago, three or four weeks ago, the Unicode Technical Committee meet, met and I rang, I, I phoned them in, uh, and we talked a little bit about Georgian. I told them I was coming here to this. And one of them said, well, you know, we think it's a kind of, em we in the Unicode Technical Committee think it's a kind of emphasis. So, um, and, and, and he says, you know, just look at the Wikipedia article on emphasis, uh, typographic emphasis, and in order to determine, uh, you know, how this fits into the scheme of emphasis in modern typography in the world. Well, I did. And they have an article, emphasis, typography, you know, because they have other emphasis. Oh, this is great. Um, ignoring punctuation marks, because that's like exclamation marks, and that's a way of marking emphasis, and that doesn't count. I'll go backwards up through that list. So we can emphasize something using color, and this is not plain text. Here we have some lines from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, available on Amazon. Um, <laughs> Actually, shipping to Georgian isn't, you know, I mean, it, seriously, if we make a list and you guys want one, I mean, I'll do a massive shipment. And it's a wonderful book. It's a great translation, and Gia is a fantastic guy. He's really funny. Um, so we have English here, and then we have English again in the Deseret alphabet. Now, the Deseret alphabet was invented by the Mormons in the 19th century when they went to Utah to escape the rest of American Christendom. Um, and they thought that it's a phonetic alphabet, and they thought that we would, uh, that they would use that, and it would be better and easier to learn to read, because English orthography is whatever. Uh, and it has case, and it's been encoded, and it's not even a real script, and nobody uses it, but it's there, unlike, you know, Georgian. And then we have Belarusian there, and there we have, we have Georgian. Okay, so that's one way of emphasizing by using color. And we can underline. And underlining is also not plain text. Okay, but it's fine. We all do that. We do that in all these alphabets. I, I didn't have a Greek Alice, otherwise I would have put the Greek in besides the Deseret. Yeah, there you are. And we can use letter spacing. Now, letter spacing is not as popular as it used to be. Letter spacing used to be popular when they had lead type, because you would just put a little slug of lead between each letter, and it would be a way of doing that. So most people don't do that anymore. Um, but you, you see it from time to time. I don't think it was really ever done in English, but there you are. Uh, it was certainly done in Cyrillic and in Georgian. Um, th that is, this letter spacing is either plain text um, because you've put a space between each letter, in which case you can't spell check it, uh, or it's, or it's non-plain text if you use tracking uh, in a modern computer phone. Uh, and we can use bold in order to emphasize things, and we can use italic in order to emphasize things, and we're all familiar about this. And, and hey, great, we can, use, we can use all caps to emphasize things. Except we can't. Okay. And, and we can use small caps, too, to emphasize things, except that we, we can't. Um, so let's look at the use of mixed case. Did I actually? I, no, I didn't actually put in the example of <laughs> mixed case. Sorry. It's in, it's, 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 examples of it are in this document, however. Uh, this is the second version of the document that, uh, that uh, uh, Coco and Nika and I wrote together. Um, the second version is better than the first version because it's bilingual uh, in English and in Georgian. And in that, we propose to add this set of characters. God, they're beautiful, aren't they? Actually, that's a really beautiful font. I think it's a very nice font. 
Um, and in order to do this, in order to achieve this, we need to do two things. We need to convince the Unicode Technical Committee that this is real, that, it is, um, that this is the correct solution. And which, in order to do that, we need to convince the stakeholders in Georgia that it's the right to do. And that means government and business and the design community. You know, the design community is already completely behind it, which is fine. And um, I, think, I think in some, you know, I, 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 I don't think that I'm bashing the Unicode Technical Committee, because I'm really not. I mean, I've been working with these people for 20 years, and they're as much family as anybody else, some of them anyway. Um, but um, they, they're reluctant, and they're working for companies. That's, that's, that's who's in the Unicode Consortium. It's Microsoft, and Google, and Apple, and Linux, and a bunch of others, and then there are a bunch of people who are interested in, in emojis. Um, and uh, so they're concerned about that. They're concerned about stability. They're concerned about costs and all sorts of things. The design community, which in Georgia is probably responsible for producing most of the content that's read, they're the ones who first realize that this is a real problem. Probably because you know you're working there, putting a magazine. Somebody writes an article. It might be in 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 ASCII encoding. It might be in unknown encoding. God, what a nightmare. Um, so, <sighs> some of this stuff from now on to the, to the end of the, of the talk is, these are the kinds of arguments that we're trying to put together in order to convince everyone. Uh, we need to convince teachers, we need to convince the Department of Education, we need to convince the Department of Communication. Apparently, some of the departments, or the ministries here in, in, in Georgia, you know, the police and stuff, they say, well, you know, we're concerned about data, but we take our instructions, we implement change, so if, if these letters were added, they would deal with it, but they're not, their job isn't to make something like that happen, which is reasonable. Um, but anyway, so the metaverly mechadrilli case pairing is no different from the asontaverly nuskuri case pairing, and those were rightly disunified, and nuskuri, when it was disunified from metaverly, was case paired to asontaverly. So ordinary metaverly should not be unified with asontaverly, because that's wrong, nor should it be treated as a style. Unfortunately, even the government website, which does use Unicode, for, George, for its Georgian, mistakenly maps Mtavruli glyphs to the Asamtavruli code points, which are in, were, were, were there in Unicode 1.0. And so what you get is this. Okay, well, one of the things, one of the features uh, that we discover by, I mean, by doing this, you know, they, they point to a font, the font has an encoding, they're able to do that, it's distinctive, <coughs> but you can't find that string by Googling for it because you're going to be Googling by typing Mechadruli, and Mechadruli isn't a Somtavruli, and so it won't show up. If we add a, 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 a Metavruli, that will be linked to Mechadruli, and you would see both the just like it happens in Latin and Cyrillic when you Google for that. Uh, and and, and what, wait, wait, was there more to say? No, uh, I just talk about how the font does, fonts do things. Um, and, and as I said before, uppercase Georgian and Latin are found side by side everywhere. Lowercase Georgian and Latin are found um, everywhere. And here's an example from the top of a letterhead the Minister for Education and Science sent us. Um, and I just don't understand, um, I honestly don't understand why, why some people, at least in the Unico Technical Committee, don't understand don't have an answer for the question, why should Latin be encoded as case, but the Georgian here should be encoded as style? Because the reason that those two are both in uppercase, because they are both in uppercase, is because they want a uniform look to it. And doing one by, by, with characters and the other by some sort of und, as yet undefined style does not make sense. So how do we implement this? Now, this is the big deal, okay? In order to, uh, we, we're going to have to have an action plan and people are going to have to actually do this stuff. Uh, keyboards will have to be devised in order to, so that people can input the new characters. And Well, this is the list and the next slides are all of these one by one. Uh, so keyboards need to add the characters. Well, this is dead easy because there is a, uh, a, a caps lock key which doesn't do anything. So all you have to do is use the caps lock and that will activate the Tavruli um, characters. Uh, this is actually better than using a special shift key or an alt key for it because 
uh, when you are typing uh, in Tavruli, you want the whole word to be. So you don't want to have to hold down the shift key with one finger and be typing with the other. You just hit the one thing and then you do your word and then you, un you turn that off. You do your one word or your 10 words or whatever it is and then you turn it off. So it's extremely elegant uh, way of doing this. Um, here we have, these are the shifted characters. Now you'll usually see Sha and I mean the, some of the ones who, uh, this, this one actually actually has all the extra uh, <laughs> Georgian in characters encoded by me. Um, they fit there, although possibly um, they should be on Alt rather than Shift, although some of them are used in Svan, and so the question is, well, why should the Svans have to go to Alt when they could use Shift? That needs to be discussed, but it's not a big problem. Um, basically, the currently unused caps lock is immediately intuitive, and it will not be difficult to change software so that it will support Tavruli, so that's not an expensive change. In fact, the Macintosh one is already available, except that the code points don't exist for it. Character properties will need to be updated, which will enable case folding and sorting and searching uh, and all of that. And uh, th that isn't a problem. We very often have lowercase Latin letters for which we add an uppercase letter later because it turns out that the phonetic character was used in a natural orthography in Africa somewhere or something. Um, when Nuskuri was added, uh, we added lowercase characters for Cherokee, and those were mapped, so this is the normal, the normal thing. Obviously, it takes some time for that stuff to, to, to work. The, Tavruli, the, a new Tavruli encoding will not work on Windows XP, and that's as to be expected, and we don't care. <laughs> okay. Although I might, you know, you could, you could hack it for Mac OS 9, though. Yeah. Okay, the issue of title casing needs to be addressed because you don't mix single word strings with a capital and some small letters in Georgian. Uh, as we know, there was uh, some late 19th and early 20th century uh, evidence for this. Uh, we don't know how much there was. Uh, it might have been very widespread. It might have been uh, just one school of thoughts where they tried it and so we don't know. Uh, somebody needs to do research on that. But. Um, the, the fact is that title casing doesn't work for English or French either. And we've got the title of The Wind and the Willows with a small i and a small t is the correct way of writing that in English. But if you use an automatic process to title case, you'll get the wind in the willows, and that's just wrong. And it's the same for French. Le vin dans les sols is correct, but le vin dans les sols is not. Okay, so. The, you, you could argue that, well, you know, title casing isn't used in Georgian, and, and if we add these capital letters, then, you know, Georgian will get title cased all the time, and that will irritate people. And so, well, let me tell you, it irritates me when English is title cased, so I don't feel sorry. You know, it just, that's a feature that isn't very useful, and it's okay. Now, this is going to be some work. Fonts will need to be updated, so Unicode-enabled fonts will need to add and have really forms if they don't have them. If the designer wants to, I mean, you can't make them. Unicode enable fonts, which have the Tavruli forms in the wrong place, will need to move those, and that's a, a matter of urgency. And if they have them in the ASCII part, then you should actually, the, the designer should just paste in free sans or free mono or free serif, whatever, just so that those things are there. And that will actually help users who switch to the, to the font because they like this style, it will show, oh wait, you know, this paragraph was written in ASCII, so they might need to figure out how to, to re-encode that. Um, and then font pairs like Grigiola and Grigiola Matav should be merged so that it's all in one font, so people don't have to change fonts in the middle of a sentence. Uh, and all ASCII fonts should be abandoned. You should have one for emergencies. Like, what does this say? Uh, localized software might choose to use Tavruli. I don't know how much localized software there is. Uh, any localized software which does currently exist does not need to be changed because it's already correct, because writing all the time in, in Mechadruli is correct. But some localizers may choose to emphasize some words with it later, um, because that's one of the reasons that Tavruli is being used. Uh, and then the public will need to be educated on this, and that's why um, well, now you all know about Tavruli, even though you learned it well about it when you were this tall and don't remember. Uh, kids will need to know about it because they will be using computers and the computers will have a caps lock key and they will need to be taught, ah, and when you want to do this, this is how you do it. 
Um, and so that will actually change things here. People will um, do better uh, at, 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 at composing. I mean, I don't know. I mean, when, back when I had a typewriter in, when I was in, in secondary school, uh, you know, I would, I, I knew to use the underscore, which would, I knew meant italic and stuff. And then when you get computers, you just make it italic. So uh, use of metaphorically will be more reliable. Uh, there you go. Thank you.